Greetings and welcome back. Today, I think it'd be an understatement to say I'm joined by an elusive guest. No, instead, I'm joined by a veritable legend of the manosphere of MGTOW, in particular, Spetsnaz. Many, many people have asked about Spetsnaz, what happened, why his channel disappeared. And I think today, if you're curious, you'll uh, receive some answers to those questions. So I guess the big question well, is Spetsnaz. One day, there was a channel, even though it wasn't active, and then the next day, it was gone. Nothing was left. And I remember when I had heard about that, and everyone, I saw messages in the comment section, probably dozens, maybe even hundreds over time, what happened to your channel? What happened to everything? So, yeah, I guess that's the most, well, the burning question. What happened? Why did you leave? Etc. Sure. Well, it's a pleasure to, um, <clears throat> pardon my voice, I was screaming all last night. <laughs> the rock concert. Um, thank you for having me on your channel. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been interesting. I've been away for, for quite some time. I, I'm, I think it's been a couple of years couple of years by now um but it seems like a lot has changed um i hadn't watched any sort of i, I guess what you term manosphere content in, in quite some time maybe three going on three years um yeah i mean i relocated started doing my own thing and all the rest of it but um it's only recently i started coming back online and i was watching a, a political channel and then um that sort of that particular um content maker made a a response video uh, to someone. It says, and I, I came across something called the black pill, mm. and that caught my interest. <laughs> I'd, I'd never heard of that before. Thought, late to the this? party. <laughs> uh, very, very late, it would seem. Um, but that fascinated me, and I, I won't name his um, his channel, so I haven't asked his permission to do it, to do it. But um, it just fascinated me, and his life story fascinated me, and his insights were just I, I thought were quite extraordinary. Um, and it seemed to mirror. Uh, a large number of men, um, especially over the last few years, uh, men that I've interacted with, uh, who they've found themselves in this position. Um, and I'm not just talking about the dating market or relationships or anything along those lines. It's the whole thing. It's like it's men really are having an awakening. And these are guys from you know blue collar, every every walk of life you can imagine, and they're dealing with these issues, and they're reacting to it, and they're talking to each other and it's I've, I've never seen men at any point in, in my life ask questions like they're asking now about the way that things are about you know the, you know, all these issues that men face all, all these toxic messages that they receive um how they've basically been you know been whipping boy and been the kicking boy ever since they were kids and conversely I've, I've never seen women jump up and down and scream more than they're doing right now and it seems like this this real tidal wave of just convergence of circumstances that I'm just seeing ebb out in all these different social groupings that I'm a part of. So, yeah, I found that absolutely fascinating. So that sort of drew me back in, it sort of reignited an interest. But um, yeah, I'd say that there were a number of reasons why I left. Um, I get, get I came to a conclusion as. And it's going to sound odd you know, after the work that I've done, but it's, was I really helping men? And, you know, in a number of ways, I knew that I was. But also conversely, I felt that I needed to take accountability for things that I'd said um, and being potentially part of something that may have been maybe just due to the anonymity on the internet or, or the way that things are structured online that I wasn't familiar with. Um, was I keeping men in a sort of a holding pattern rather than actually helping them progress? I think, was I, was I feeding something that was keeping men in this, this state where they weren't progressing? And I, I saw your most recent video um, where you commented on on sort of the state of the manosphere and all the rest of it. You gave, gave a good summation, um, just sort of touching on those elements. And yeah, I mean, in, in terms of men reaching their own potential, you know, not anybody else's, but in terms of how men, you know, 
turn more direction how, how they view their life and their purpose and their value and all the rest of it not dictated by anything else but was i preventing that in some way now because online i mean we know it, it can become quite a quite an echo chamber hmm. um i mean it, it you know the positive it it's helpful to you know as a place to find a degree of acceptance and to acquire knowledge and, and shared experience but equally it can become a funnel of, of negativity you know, it's so I had a lot of questions about that, and there was a lot of toxic stuff that was being directed at me, and, and I was getting messages that were <laughs> quite hateful. Um, was, so there were a lot of things that sort of funneling into that, and I was thinking, do I need this mm. at, at this point in my life? Um, I know there was a lot of sort of negativity online with potential doxing or actual doxing. I know you received some. I know that Baba did. Um, I know a few other people that I'd talked to as well and didn't seem like that was being addressed. Uh, so I didn't see anybody, any, anybody tackling that. And a lot of people that I was talking to at the time just sort of dropped off the radar. You know, of course I did the same thing, so I can't criticize, but I can understand why they just want to take a break. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I think there are a number of factors uh, there. I mean, your content was uh, very, much known for being, uh, I guess you could say, visceral and tapping into some really uh, raw, emotional, primal stuff. And sure. I think uh, on the question of whether you know you thought you were helping men, um, because of the the time gap, um, you know things are different these days, obviously. But the reality is, back in the day and I'd consider you an old timer too, that the kinds of things you were talking about, being able to sort of tap into the emotional recesses of uh, the male psyche and and to really just put across a sense of, uh, I can relate to that. And I think that was something that a lot of people uh, felt resonated with your work. Sure. Because in today, well, in today's world, probably less so, but certainly back then, even my own awakening, if you want to call it that, a lot of that was characterized by simply uh, recognizing that I was not alone in my thoughts about myself and women and and, and things of that nature. And in particular, in addressing, you know, male suffering and and hardship and, and difficulty, that was something that was addressed in even less. And so you tapped into a, a certain component of that. And I think that definitely was helpful. But like a lot of things, things of, you know, that really primal aspect of things, it, it can become, I hate to use the word toxic. There's so many words you can't use anymore because they've been sort of corrupted toxic. <laughs> because what happens is it, it's almost like a, a drug addict that's returning for their hit. So it's like I need to get my kind of raw... Spetsnaz hit, you know, and it becomes a, sure. a regular thing, and then almost a, a sort of uh, dependency. This isn't necessarily unique to that, but because you almost uniquely tapped into that raw emotional aspect of things, it was uh, a little bit different than somebody who, I don't know, needs to watch his daily or weekly prank video or something. I'm not comparing the two by any means. The same. <laughs> it's it's a different it's a different uh, feeling. And of course, what goes along with that, what accompanies that is a lot of intensity of feeling and emotion. And you're, so you're going to get some of the most visceral emotions and, and, and feelings possibly directed at you because that's kind of what you're tapping into to, to begin with, with the message you're putting across. Um, I don't think it's, you know, I definitely think you were much more helpful than harmful. And I thought about this myself. I mean, the reality is, you know, you try to do what you can, especially if you want to help men, but there are going to be some people that either misinterpret what you say or just, as I've increasingly uh, become aware over the years since I'm the fossil here, that oftentimes, and this is general, generally applicable to content creation, but specifically here, you'll have people who are not even listening to what you're saying. They, they go in 
it's almost like they ha- they have a, a movie reel in their heads and they're just li- and it's it, what you're saying is not a it doesn't really parallel what they're saying but they're just hearing something completely different and because of that you're going to get this distortion um i see it all the time where I, I i make a video i mean i mean i make a video talking about bananas and oranges and the guys you know ranting on about uh, steak bread and and koala bears it's like no, I wasn't talking about that. And so I think that that's part of it too. And when, especially in the murkier areas where you were going, of that sort of raw primal emotion, people are just gonna almost feel what you're hearing rather than listen. At least that's my interpretation of, of how that might have ended up happening with you. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, you're talking about that. I mean, it, I always reiterated that um, I never said anything that men didn't already know Uh, but all I was doing was saying it's okay to have those feelings it's okay to have those experiences and it's okay to state them out loud it's okay to state that you have value that you're not prepared to compromise that you're you're not gonna sacrifice your self value or your your needs and desires for somebody else you've got to put yourself first and all I wanted from men was that um, to have compassion for themselves to, to be kind to themselves and to be open with themselves. So embrace all of that, embrace their, their needs, their desires, but also their weaknesses, their biases, all, like everything, just encapsulate everything and accept it. Because yeah. men have to be open and kind with each other, with themselves, because if, because people won't be, they're always going to be on that, that receiving end of it. Oh yeah. I know, I know with a lot of guys today, it's like, um, you know, every time they put their head up, they just get kicked. And it's that's what they're stating. I mean, it's things aren't getting better on that front in terms of how men are perceived. It's in a lot of areas it's getting worse. And I see it in you know different workplaces. Uh, I see it in different different dynamics and all the rest of it. And there's a lot of men out there with a lot of resentment, and you know, right, rightly so. I mean, it's there's a there's a lot of valid reasons as to why. I mean, you know, their trust, their and a lot of times their rights have been violated. So we're living in a pretty unstable society at the moment. A lot of men have been lied to. So, I mean, that's that's continuing to escalate. So men have been they've been shut off, they've been cut off. Um, it's a pretty toxic, harmful environment with really very little perceived rewards or incentives. So you can't blame them in a lot of ways. No, I don't. But there are, there are differences, I think, between, as I mentioned in that video, sort of then and now, I think that back then, I'm not a fan of this word, but it was a quote unquote more hopeful awakening. <clears throat> the idea that you could learn these things, you could be angry, you could be upset, but at the end of it, if you could somehow come to terms with the worst of it, you might be able to forge a life for yourself on your own terms. But the difference these days, as I point out in this video, is that um, there's no launching point. It's sort of a, a, a tunnel with no light at the end. And, I, and I, I think a lot of this has to do with raw numbers. I think a lot of that is just, of course, you know, more people are in the world, more people are online, and the you know, manosphere message or whatever is just, it's just bigger. And of course, there are these new terms like, you know, FA or inside, and, and <clears throat> it's, I, get, I think in a way, we were just kind of in a, a smaller, uh, smaller part of the world in some sense, and just that if people were more receptive to uh, a more hopeful message, it, it had a lot to do also with generational stuff. I mean, think sure. about these days, these guys would get all hung up on um, on sex and and become obsessed with relationships, or, or their lack thereof. A lot of that is just, well, I mean, I know you're not as old as I am, but, I mean, Tinder wasn't around back then. Tinder is sort of like the epitome of, you know, sexed up society, you know, literally just swiping, like, bang or not. Uh, swipe swipe left I don't even know how it works I've never used it but you know, point is <laughs> I hear about it right and sure. Sure. that <clears throat> that is uh, just a huge thing and then mm-hmm. 
the similar attitudes coming from that with online dating, even if if it were or used to be a little different. So I, I'd say that you know, however sexed up society might have been, and and it was to some degree, it's it's that much worse. And so young guys in particular are losing track of all the things that that they could do that have nothing to do with women. And the reality is, is there's always some potential to do something, have some interests, some hobbies, some talents, whatever. And then they become, I've seen this time and again in recent years, so bogged down that they're not even asking themselves what is still possible to do. Let's say, just for the sake of argument, you know, they're they're just, they have rotten luck. They they can't get laid, what even if that mattered, but whatever. They can't get a date. They can't get a girlfriend. That becomes a sort of reason to stop everything else that they might have done. In some cases, it's as bad as just not, you know, just stop leaving the house. It's just sort of, it's, it's, as I'm pointing out, I've met 16 year olds telling me it's over. Um, and that, that just seemed, maybe it's just my perception, very, very different. Perhaps also because yes. Yes. back in the day, <clears throat> back in your time, back in my time, that, the, the audience was a different generation, also to some degree older. So a lot of guys had, had these experiences with women. Otherwise, the, the things you talked about in particular would not have resonated uh, with them. You know, it, it would, if they were just sort of newbies and never had experiences, that's it correct. Was, yeah. they, they wouldn't have been able to. Hmm, what's he talking about? But now the new generation, you know, they call them the Zoomers. Uh, they're so. I mean, they're. It's just twenty four seven internet. I mean, literally from, from dusk to dawn, I meet guy. They have this uh, robot alarm clock with a female voice that, that's tapped into Google that wakes them up. It's just, it's just never ending there. So <clears throat> a lot of these formative experiences that you kind of need, and, you know, unfortunately a lot of, you know, divorced men too who had been through the ringer and difficult situations Without life experience, I mean, that's the thing. However you, whatever you do with your experiences, whatever wisdom you might accumulate without experience, it's very difficult to accumulate wisdom. It's very difficult to interpret things. And so these days, if you're 15, 16, you're being exposed to all of this with no experience, you're just going to get bogged down by that. That was very different back then. I have a feeling that maybe the at least the average viewer or listener was was – older and more experienced yeah, and these days the manosphere is much bigger and they're just much younger and, and therefore a lot more um, impulsive and they just they, they're beginning to lose their ability to see the forest for the trees in a way that was not the case earlier yeah i remember something a um <clears throat> an old boxing mm -hmm. coach said to me this when i was a kid and it, was, it came at a very critical time in my life he said um he said one thing that young men can't see is what older man has lived an old man has lived and it's, it's very true you know yeah. it's, and it's the thing is that what they can't see specifically is that our actions right now in this moment is going to dictate our future they can't see that it's then it, it's hard to reach and you're right they have to go through critical critical periods of socialization in order to develop properly but that's one aspect of it so they can have you know a perspective and they can have those experiences and that, that that's vital but it's vital in terms of you know everyday socialization, in terms of you know operating in the everyday world, um, interactions with people. And you're right, a lot of them are living on the internet. There's in August, I think it was August last year, um, in my home country, uh, there was a, a young man named Mason. I can't remember his last name, but um, I only just heard about this story. But he was studying down at the University of Canterbury, and he was in a dorm room, um, so he had his own little little room there in the um, college dorm. And he had essentially retreated from society completely. His mother died when he was 14, and his only real family was his stepfather. Um, I don't think they'd been in contact for some time, but he'd basically withdrawn um, from study and all the rest of it and just stayed in his room. They found his body after a month. Uh, they found it, and there'd been so much decomposition that they couldn't determine the cause of death. Hmm. And he was 19, you know, and he'd just completely withdrawn. And it's, yeah, that, that's, I, I've got to be honest, that, that's one of my fears for a, a lot of guys coming up today, that they're going to look at this content and use it as justification, not, not just to progress in life and all the rest of it, but it's, it, you know, it, it could end up completely isolating them and having profound 
health yeah. risks. And, you know, yeah, it's... I, I know. I think exactly what you mean. <clears throat> I'd like to think so. I, I've actually addressed this, you know, during your absence on several occasions. Sure. Uh, in a sense, and I don't know if you're talking about exactly the same thing, but this would be my interpretation that yeah, the red pill. And this means so many different things these days, but the red pill traditionally, you know, in the man sort of MGTOW context, the red pill is, uh, it has a lot of potential to do good, but it also has a lot of destructive potential. You know, people call it red pill rage, but not just that. It can lead to a state of continual despair. I've seen it many times. You know, I have a, a, a friend that, that tried uh, the, the MGTOW way but ultimately it he for whatever reason there's some maybe psychological dependencies that he he, he just wants to live a, nor, a quote unquote normal life you know married kids that sort of thing um because it was too isolating or whatever reasons you might want to cite but and then there are even worse cases where all you get is sort of despair like oh if things are this way then <laughs> why bother why do anything and yeah, there, that's that's a potentially dangerous element that's always there. I actually have said, I, I keep on saying, I'm, I've gone on record publicly, I'm probably the only MGTOW content producer that doesn't think it's a, some sort of universal good to say, you know, go your own way. I actually think that, you know, people are going to hear the message regardless, but maybe some guys, whatever hardship they might endure, are just better off in a more sort of dreamy, aspiration laden world of uh you know I'm gonna, the conventional stuff you know i honestly believe that after so many interactions and going on a decade of all of this stuff and and then but on the other hand on the other hand i also worry conversely that okay you can set somebody on that on that path you just you know leave them be un, unknowing and, and ignorant but how much greater is their fall when they, when it, if and when it, it falls apart, you know? Because the amount of time invested, whether it's a marriage, relationships, whatever, and real to realize then a lot of that was an illusion. A lot of that was simply delusion, and so it's a it's a push and sort of push and pull. I, at times, I think, yeah, for some people, and I won't be able to determine who those people are. It probably isn't a, a good idea, um, but on the other hand, sometimes in, in the case of this uh, friend of mine, I, you can call it cynical, but he's fully aware of you know female nature. I mean, even though he quote unquote wants this conventional thing, he has no illusions that women are you know lubby dubby. Uh, we really care about you uh, types or anything like that, and so there's an awareness that he got from the MGTOW years that even going into whatever it is he's trying to do these days that they have a certain psychology and they're going to view him a certain way and it's not necessarily pleasant but he's willing to accept that and I think that's still better than pretending you know women and men are something that they're not but I I, I don't know if I'm I was interpreting what you said correctly um because I'm not in your head, but I, I do think that at least that's been my interpretation over the years that for some men, a lot of this stuff is incredibly damaging because after you imbibe, take in the red pill, whatever that means these days, it's really on you to do something. After the rage subsides, if it ever does, after all, you realize that essentially you're, in a way, you're kind of screwed, but you don't have to be screwed in every way. And then Nonsense. it's on you to to do something, to, you know, whatever it might be. As I mentioned, to even walk out the house a few times a week, you know, take a walk, that's on you. Yes. Nobody, there's no Spetsnaz that can, uh, you know, coach you on that. I mean, maybe it'd be great if there were, you know, you, uh, you know, screaming in somebody's ear to go take a walk, but that's, you got to do, I mean, that's the stuff. It's like, it's or, or you know, you're, you're a gym goer. I assume you still go to the gym these days. Mm -hmm. You, you got to, there are just times when, the other day, I had no desire to go, and I was tired, but I kind of forced myself. It wasn't the most amazing workout. You, you, the things you got to do to yes. – and, and, and that's where the momentum starts, but that's the problem. Yes. That's where I think, uh, you know, it can the quote-unquote red pill or this, this uh, however you want to put it, enlightenment, awareness, 
it only can do so much. The, there's so much. The momentum really needs to start with you, and it needs to keep on pushing you. And you need to recognize that there's a there's a life beyond that, and that there are so many things that you can still do that don't necessarily require that illusion or delusion that you used to believe. Yeah, yeah. It's um always have a saying. It's um don't let the things you can't control control you. you know, that's always been one of my favorite sayings. And yeah. You know, with with people, uh, and everybody's the same. But I mean, they get caught up in resentment. It's a cycle of resentment. So they they find themselves fluctuating between anger and fear. That that's typically what happens, and they can manifest in a, a bunch of different ways. But most people just try to find qu quick fixes. They try to white knuckle their way through it. You know, try and soothe the anxiety, soothe the fear, the anger, all the rest of it. But it's all temporary fixes. But the, the root of the problem is always going to continue to fester and that that manifests as resentment and if you're ingesting all this kind of stuff constantly um it's yeah it can go that way so you know it's anger resentment fear they're all connected so it, it becomes the cycle of being scared of the future resentment over the past and then you've got to factor in all the time that's been long. but um yeah it's there's a lot of bad advice out there about how to deal with anger and resentment and all the rest of it. People come up with all, all kinds of bullshit, but can't say bullshit. Is that fine? I won't get demonetized. <laughs> uh, 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 well, well, I don't want to be... Are you pausing? Given the, your, your, unique, your unique accent, I don't think it'll be too much of an issue. Go on. Okay, I won't pick it up. All right. But, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's people got to face, face the pain, face the resentment and all the rest of it to heal it. So, I mean, it's... There's a lot of exercises. I won't go through the exercises, but things you can do. So you can of, of who you resent, why you resent them, the negative ways it impacts your life and the part you played in all of it. So, you know, you can you can find ways of coping and sort of navigating your environment moving forward. But a lot of that comes from experience. You've got to have those experiences. And unfortunately, a lot of them are negative, but, you know, that's how you build up resilience. You can't just opt out and then hope the best. It's it doesn't work that way so it's you, you want to ultimately transition from into somebody who understands the source of your resentments and transition into someone who you know, can identify the source of the feelings and, and the areas that you want to work on so you build up the resistance you build up those strategies and all the rest of it because you you can't create positive change from a negative mindset it's just, it's it's impossible you can't do it yeah, you know, yeah, people. I'm not saying people view themselves like this online, but a lot of people got stopped seeing themselves as a perpetual victim, and that's just a bit of tough love. I mean, you've got to be able to say that to people. When I used to work with inmates, we used to have you know, it, it was very confrontational, but in a way that they felt safe and supported, so they could challenge other people's perceptions and, and their mindsets and all the rest of it. So you get positive peer influence then it becomes a positive influence and they go out, they can navigate the present environment better. They're in a more positive frame of mind. They develop empathy, compassion, so they can they can actually, you know, identify with the victims, see where they've gone wrong and you know, develop strategies from there. But I mean, people typically who, who, who can handle, who have got resilience can handle this um, unfairness or perceived or, or actual real injustice they tend to be able to catch their emotional response before it starts leading into that ongoing cycle and it can lead into very obsessive thinking and then you start to feel hopeless you feel like you can't change anything because the game is rigged and we've heard that saying we're hearing it back in back in our day back in my day um but it's and people that have got resilience they think rationally before they act right and they can recognize the difference between what they can control and what they can't and dwelling on unfairness and perceived or real injustice, it doesn't do anything to change it. It does nothing to change it. It just drains your energy. It just, you know, it magnifies all your problems and, and your emotions. And it just keeps it more focused on those problems. And all, all the problems that we can't control so we can't be, get busy and, you know, proactive about finding solutions. Yeah, and there's an important so, factor yeah. here. Uh, I would say uh, one of the newer factors. It's not that things that I call mm -hmm. them you know, these echo chambers, they always have existed, but sure. um, they've been amplified by various platforms. Um, Discord's a good one. Um, various online forums always been around, but when you, and I've seen this, you know, when 
when you get a bunch of guys, they're all in the same boat, um, they tend to stay uh, lost at sea. And so they're just, they're sort of, in a way, it's, it's what I mentioned earlier, there's a, a sense of, um, a sense of related relatedness. Oh, oh, well, you're going through this too. But at some point in time, they just, they're so stuck in this rut and this mentality yeah. and this mindset that, and because they're, they're const, it's a feedback that they're constantly sort of feeding off of each other in this state of uh, despair and uh, I hate this word, hopelessness, uh, that the, it's, it becomes impossible for them to, uh, to get, I mean, I, mean, I it's, it's astonishing. You know, I have met some young men that are just, I know one guy that I've been encouraging now for months that he should yeah. start some kind of channel about something or go out there. This guy's voice, I've never, well, never, I've almost never heard a voice like this. It's like something from the past, it, it's, it's so unique right. and amazing. Other people hear him and the first thing they say, become gotta the go audio right, yeah, gotta, yeah. gotta do something. And I've been yeah. nagging him and nagging him and nagging him. And he's also quite smart, and bit, but he's stuck in a spot where, you know, the He's got in a certain echo chamber, and he's kind of, you know, this guy, I think he's 20, he's saying, nah, I'm kind of resigned. You're 20. Uh, there's so many things yeah, you can still yeah, do. Yeah. And it's just, but the, unfortunately, the feedback he's getting up yeah, until exactly. now, even even when he gets the, the sort of the new feedback, it's can just to reinforce it. Yes, I can. Yeah, what, I, what I'd say, um, you know, to a lot of the young men that I, I talk to, um, I tell them, you know, we can't change the past. We can address what's happening now. We can't change somebody else's behavior if they aren't willing to change, but we can change how we respond. Now, a lot of the guys that I've worked with, of course, the, the instinctual response is going to happen. That's going to happen. We have got no control over that, but we do have you know, control over stabbing someone or putting someone's head through a wall. We can control that, that reaction. So again, that's sort of an extreme example. It's on the extreme end, but you know, it, again, we can't let the things we can't, control control us we've got to have compassion for ourselves you know, recognizing that a lot of things are outside of our control i think is key you know you've got to have acceptance acceptance of that and the more focus the more you focus on on having empathy and compassion and acceptance it's the less room there is for anger you know, again it's shift the mindset come from from positive space you've got to be able to see the potential and the incentives um yeah, I know we, we've got that term, that the carrot isn't worth the chase, but I'm not even talking about women. We haven't even touched women on this. Um, maybe I shouldn't have said that with the whole black bull thing, but... Um, can you? Yes. Yeah, hello, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we cut out there. No, I think we've... I said a lot of these guys is, um, you know, you've got to decide for yourself that it's not worth it. Yeah, you know, but by staying for injustice and all the rest of it, you're, you're wronging yourself. You're doing damage to yourself. And I, I think you know, standing back, and it's hard when when somebody doesn't have that kind of life experience. Um, they've got to be able to separate the the facts of the situation from the emotions that they're feeling, because they're getting trapped. They're having that instinctual response to you know perceived injustice or actual injustice. But they've got to have patience with themselves. You know, they, they've got to have compassion for themselves. Because they're going to move from one end of this process to the next, and like we've said, that they're missing out on a lot of stuff that we we had early formative experiences, you know, social relation. Whereas that you you've had relationships in the past, you've lived in different countries, you've done this, done that, you've, you've seen things, you've lived it, um, and it's 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 very hard for them. Because another content creator that that we both know, um, he said something quite profound. Um, it's he said, uh, it's like you're in a race, but sh you can't find the starting line. It's like, where's the starting line? I, I can't see it. There's a blind spot there. Um, and I think that's what it's like for a lot of these young men. Um, you can tell them things, but if they haven't lived it, if they haven't experienced it, there's a feeling of loss, but they don't know what they're losing out on. Yeah. And and that's, that's, yeah. There's another factor. It's uh, again, sort of the, the sexed up society, <clears throat> the ones who sort of hyper focus on uh, 
impact on relationships or their inability to get them. And I often kind of try to use a ridiculous uh, metaphor, but you know, imagine we lived in a society where, for whatever bizarre reason, pineapple ham pizza was the the, the, the go-to <laughs> food, but it cost ten thousand dollars to eat one, so very few people could afford it, and everyone was talking about it. Uh, pretty soon, whether you actually like pineapple ham pizza or not, you would think that you wanted that. And it's the same thing, really. But if if you haven't experienced it, maybe one day you did sit down and have a pineapple. I'm just like, well, it's okay, but it's not that special. And I think that's the issue with with some of the frustration related to to women and, and sex, because the problem is it, it's very difficult to separate that that mentality that you're trying to address um, sure. from from that, because everyone's talking about it, and they, but they've not had the experiences. So that's the problem, really. They don't have that experience, but everyone is saying that this experience is the thing you must have, and that just sort of builds right. upon itself. And it would be the same thing with, with anything, you know, pineapple ham pizza, take your pick. You could make up anything. If everyone were talking about it and saying, that's the thing you need to pursue but and, and get, but you've never gotten and you also struggle to pursue it, that becomes a problem. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, I was going to say, but yeah, it was, I don't want to dismiss what these guys are saying. You know, I, I want them to have the space and, and, you know, feel that they can say this. I'm not going to talk over them. I'm not going to talk at them. But, you know, if it's coming across like that, that, that's not what I mean. It's wherever they go and then try to talk about this, is they just get shouted down. They get branded as something. And um, it's it's painfully unfair what they're receiving, and it's just it's again everywhere they they look they're just taking a kick in the teeth, um, and it's hard for these guys. It's hard for them socially. Uh, it's it's hard for them all kinds of different avenues of life because again they don't have the experience. But it's you know, I liken it to a guy that I know. Um, now he's he's on the autism spectrum, um, so he, when he converses with people whether it's in a work environment or a social environment, he calls it the pantomime. So he's had to learn it from scratch. So how to make eye contact, how to shake hands, how to say goodbye and good morning and all the rest of it and all these little things. He's broken it down for me. He says, if I, if someone's talking to me and I nod, they're going to talk two to three times longer. And he's got a number that he counts down when he makes eye contact with someone, then he looks away, then he looks back and all the rest of it. So, with him, he, he's got to learn everything by rote, by route, because um, he can't see all the social nuances. And uh, this guy, he's a good-looking guy. The thing is, so women approach him. You know, so he's lucky in that respect. But because, um, yeah, he's, he's got a lot of social anxiety and all the rest of it. But I, this girl asked him back to her place the other week, and um, I think the line was, let's Netflix and chill. So he went back there and watched the movie. He said that was a good movie. Thank you. Got him and left. Hmm. So it's you know I, I can understand his his sort of perspective on it, but he, he's had to work on that and work on that and work on that, and everything is an obstacle for him. But um, he's managed to build up networks of people. He's he's now part of a social group and also a bunch of different networking groups and all the rest of it. And it, it's because of the way his brain works. When he maintains eye contact with someone, it's almost like it's painful. From it. it's not just anxiety it's it triggers part of the brain um so he, he's got to go through all these little mazes and things that he doesn't understand um and it, that's god what's that's like 15 years being in that old world of just constant rejection and failure and people looking at him like he's different and you know not understanding him and all the rest of it and it's like he's walking blind into things but he's had to do all that work because for him he he really didn't have a choice. So, I mean, there was an incentive there for him. So maybe that's the difference. Maybe that's why he invested in himself like that and put in that work. But I, I can understand for a lot of guys today, they don't see any any light at the end of the tunnel. They don't see any kind of worthwhile incentive to be chasing. Now, that's I don't think that's that's correct. Um, but it's it's hard for them to see that. Hmm. Yeah, and I think um, accepting limitations is a, is a big factor here. Uh, 
even I would argue if that limit, if you really think, I don't know, maybe your heart's or your mind's desires uh, to be in a relationship with a woman, if you really think that's the crowning achievement of human yeah. existence, I, I'd say you have another thing coming, but let's say you actually believe that. <laughs> then if that's not possible, you need to arrange yourself with your perceived reality. If that's not the case, then do all the things that you can do. I mean, um, that's the thing. I think oftentimes people want, well, it's obvious, people want things that they don't have. And it's easy in that process to forget the things, A, they have and the things that they, they can do. And as you, you know, said to your earlier and many times in the back in the day, you know, you got to be kind to yourself. Um, I guess I'm a bit of a broken record on this, and I don't like talking about it too extensively, but, you know, I've had chronic sleep issues going on for almost 25 years. Every day, you know, is, is just random. There are days when I'm non-functional where I just say, you know what, I just got to accept it. And over time, I've when I was much younger, I used to rage about it and get angry. But maybe it's just getting older and just realizing that at this stage, there's nothing I can really do about it. So I just kind of try to work with it. And then when when I'm more functional on a given day, that's great. And when not, it sucks. But so you got to just kind of accept limitations. But it doesn't mean you can't. You, you you're limited to nothing. You just do uh, what you can. Yes. Um, but of course, in the reality we're living in now, where everything's on the online, and I plan on making a video more extensively about this topic, you know, everyone is happy, everyone's beautiful, everyone is getting laid, everyone is, is all these things. But if you actually took the time to step outside in the real world, you see that's not true. Not everyone is beautiful, not everyone, not everyone is ripped, not everyone is, is, is happy, not everyone, uh, I mean, I, because my sleep problems, I, I get out pretty early. I see people dragging their their tired asses to work in the morning. They, they're not they're not looking normal people, you know. They're not they're not looking like they're having a great time, really. Um, and so, I think it's it's that's the new environment we're in. Is this uh, again, gentlemen? I'll make a video, a specific video about this topic of hyper reality. But that what I call, or what's an, an author called, hyper reality, where everything seems a certain way but it's um not actually that way and i think mm -hmm. when people lose their ability to live in real life and i guess you know you're you're even far more than i am much more tapped into what's referred to as irl real in real life real life than i mean you, you just you were just living your life which you know good on you probably the best thing anyone yeah. can do and then you come back yeah. to this and you're just thinking what the the hell is this <laughs> yeah 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 i mean i you know I, I i guess when i was making videos i you know i'd watch your work i'd watch barbarossa um yeah i didn't watch enough i always said that i, I didn't watch enough content but um i came back and looking at the content um it's yeah i don't think uh, <laughs> there's good and bad to put it that way um you know there's like i say it's a great place for for men to to interact and it's also got the toxic elements as well um, and if there is such a thing as a philosophy with, with MGTOW, um, then, you know, it's, it's always been about, you know, putting yourself first and uh, yeah, there's always been a positive, positive message with that. So I've honestly never been able to determine what MGTOW is. Um, I, I just, it's for me, it's just, you know, having, having those foundations, feeling empowered, having control of my life and so on. Um, that's, that's as far as it goes. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I, it's it's hard to look at a lot of the content. Just scroll through it and go, well, that's just going backwards. Um, it's yeah, it doesn't seem to have progressed to. I, I guess from from where I came from and the complete naivete on my part um, coming into it because I came from sort of clinical background. Um, when I was working with with inmates and all the rest of it, these guys came from you know really harsh environments, but when they were in that room um you know they wanted to be engaged right they wanted the, their time to be worth something and they wanted to look forward to something positive so they wanted a sense of optimism and they had that they wanted to build resilience they, they they wanted to have a purpose they wanted to be happy and it was good they could come in and they could have this time and what we established in, in that room was you know 
peer support and all the rest of it, but we gave them a sense of normalcy. We created boundaries and all the rest of it, which is extremely comforting to someone who's come from that kind of traumatic background. But all these guys were working there with, with a real focus. You know, the, and we got them focusing on all the good aspects of things, even if they're, I mean, they're in prison. You know, everything's gone to hell. But get them focused on the strengths, you know, identify those strengths, get, get them focused on, on gratitude. What was one good thing that happened this week? You know, get them focused on all that positive stuff so they can understand meaning, purpose. You know, they, they can, you know, have more positive interpersonal relationships. You know, they can find the humor in things, find the happiness in things. And, and it gets them into a space where they start to be mindful of what is going right instead of what's going wrong. You know, that's a shift in mindset. They put you into a positive space. And guys like that, now that's the kind of concept that I thought this would transition into, say, 10 years down the line. Um, that's that's where I thought it was going. And it was at the, I thought the basis of it, or what it was going to transform into, was, was developing hope and meaning. You know, showing guys how to do this and how to network and build resilience and create a really purposeful, rich, full life. Um, and, you know, women in relationships, all the rest, but that's so far down the totem pole. It's, you know, what comes first is you. It's always been about that. Um, you know, it doesn't seem to have gone that way at all. It's well, just, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it's gone into like a funnel of negativity, which is like what Twitter is and... Yeah, being, backwards. being online is largely not a positive experience, really, no. for anybody. Yeah, That's absolutely true. But again, if all the world is talking about, the whole world is talking about something, like, you know, women, it, women should be sort of a, ideally the last thing to quote-unquote focus on. But at the same time, it's difficult when everyone is, it, all you're hearing is, you, I guess the difference and other difference is that even if you could put aside those thoughts in a, in a way that's, I guess, different from back in the day because most people are just plugged in the internet 24-7, it would be very difficult to ignore everyone else telling you how you're supposed to focus on it. And, I mean, I don't, I don't blame them. I understand. And it's definitely a new challenge. But... Yeah, they're really, at the end of the day, as I said in that video and I've said many times, <clears throat> they they still have to do something. Um, they still have to do, even even if the environment changes, even if everyone's talking about this, um, they still have to do really something, anything. Spetsnaz, having discussed all of this, what would you like to do? My impression is you're you're sort of you wanted to maybe let everyone know what happened and what you think, but I, I my impression is also that you're not you're not quote unquote back. You're not going to be producing content necessarily. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but if you were in if you were in today's world and you're producing content or you wanted to do you think anything would be fundamentally different or would you just take the same approach it's you know i'd i'd, I'd feel more of a responsibility to to be more um i guess i guess when i used to work in like prison environment and working younger men and all the rest of it, they used to test you because they wanted to see that you had a backbone and they wanted that because they wanted the structure and they wanted to respect you and they wanted you to take control and all the rest of it so that they could feel that you're strong enough to lead them. That's what they wanted because they never had that. So, you know, I used to deal with that. I That's kind of the environment I understood. And, you know, in that way, you, you could move into a role of a mentor respect you and to be open to you and, and you'd only guide them in a way that would get them through like different phases of empowerment and all the rest of it um but it's something that's sadly lacking with a lot of young men today and in one way you've got the internet you can communicate with each other and another another way it's just they're lost at sea 
you know, they're, they're completely isolated. And like I brought up that, that case about that young man down the University of Canterbury. Um, I look at that and I go, you know, that's got shades of Hikamori and all the rest of it. And it's, I, I, I don't want a generation of men lost. Mm. Um, they keep saying this, this phrase over and over again, it's over. I get it. It's a meme, all the rest of it. But sometimes, hey, are they joking or are they not? You know, and so I'm not saying are they going to self harm or all the rest of it. I'm saying that they're they're taking action or in an, or in action as of today that is going to have really kind of profound repercussions on their life moving forward. Um, it's not going to bring them any kind of peace. Um, and again, I you know I, I look at a lot of MGTOW, um content makers and, and commenters and all the rest of it and these guys a lot of these guys are focused on their on their life and what they value and all those things so they're very proactive about that um and it seems like a lot of those guys are in a really good place you know i would always say that there's a difference between loneliness and, and social isolation you know, loneliness is a mindset so you know, a lot of these guys have come to terms with a lot of things they've, they've come to that place and they're progressing quite nicely and all the rest of it they're in a good place mentally um, but I, I do have real, real valid concerns for these young guys. And, uh, you know, th there comes a time when you're dealing with men and they don't want to be reached. I mean, are they looking for excuses to give up or are they actually looking for reasons to continue? I'm not quite sure at this point. So, mm. you know, my, my channel was always sort of a little niche channel off to the side, I think. Um, the, you know, it's, so I, I, I don't quite know at this point what I need to do to try and reach them or if I could reach them or maybe it's just an issue of time to do see you, how things develop. Do you still try to do something actively in, in real life, a life outside of the internet uh, towards that end? Um, sort of gave you an indication of the industry that I've moved into. So um, a lot of these young guys that I interact with, I'm doing that and I'm also part of a different community health groups and stuff like that so there's always that going on mm. um and i you know i do the boxing all the time and i'm mentor the young guys and all the rest of it so community outreach things like that i've always been involved with that so that's always been important to me um but that's that's more hands-on uh, i like that that's you know that, that, that's more practical approach i think and uh, it's a lot of guys would benefit from that i think a lot of these young guys that i um yeah, yeah well, that's probably I, I think a lot that's more helpful to than, than anything yeah. you can do online. The hands-on yeah. thing, it's 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 very direct and they're, you know, everyone's up in their face and, you know, it, mm. and there's no real room for misinterpretation either. So you just, whether it's boxing or whatever it might be, you know, you, there's, there's also a doing. Men are, you know, appreciate sort of action. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Words can be interpreted one way or another, but you know, if you're there to box or whatever it might be, run laps, mm. then mm. you know you're there to do that, and there's not much uh, room for misinterpretation. Yeah, I'd done. I, I'd actually recorded a, a series of interviews I'd done with. Um, this is a while ago. Um, I, I was going to release it on my channel, but I, I thought otherwise. Um, just at times, so I was just getting a lot of quite intense messages from people and all the rest of it. So I thought maybe it wasn't in the right time but uh, and from walks of life it wasn't necessarily MGTOW or red pill related it was just these guys sort of relating their lives um, mm. whereas i thought it could have been a benefit but then i i sort of reconsidered it um yeah yeah that's it again it's are people open to those perspectives you know, do they feel it's in contradiction to uh, i don't know their, their belief system or their ideology or what have you or it, it just it's not construed to threaten or or you know, be at odds with your from perspective it's, it's their their experience but it seems anything you say today can be you know sort of deemed confrontational or challenging in that respect and it's not intended to be like that yeah i think uh, um even if you have the best intentions people are can certainly misinterpret that and I mean, I, if you feel like you've done the good that you you could do, then and you don't, there's not much else you could do. I don't see any problem with um, 
with, with your absence uh, per se. In fact, I mean, it seems like you're you're living a, a good life and you're you're helping in a very immediate, direct way um, with the mentoring and the community activities. Mm. I mean, that, arguably, that's far more valuable than anything anyone could say online because it has a, a direct impact. It's not to say you can't have a direct impact online, but it's uh, <clears throat> the impact is pretty uh, pretty variable. It can be good, it can be bad, it can be anywhere in between. And um, it, th there's no way to, to sort of directly intervene there. And, uh, and it's... Mm. So, you know, I don't, I totally understand your, where you, where you come from on this. And I, I think the audience, I would hope, would understand that too. Um, whatever, you know, whatever they appreciate about your content that you sort of moved on to a better place, so to speak. Yeah, I feel so. And I think a lot of that is, you know, due to your work and Barbarossa's work, especially as well. I mean, you know, listening to Barbarossa the first time, I listened to his post-feminism man i'd stumbled across that from uh, got i think a pu avid hmm. i really think i think a lot of guys sort of stumbled across it but um yeah that was like a sledgehammer across the consciousness I'd, I'd never heard a man speak so directly and so yeah. unapologetically and well. <laughs> reiterate and state things so proudly that i i couldn't believe he was saying the exact things that i was thinking and yeah he, he said them out loud you know, you go back and you watch something like that. Maybe the guys at today watch it today, and um, it wouldn't have that kind of impact. No, not not so only much. that, Spetsnaz, Barbarossa in that incarnation would not exist. Mm. His channel wouldn't exist because they'd shut it down. Because the things he said, well, I mean, that's, that's a right. separate issue, kind of. But yeah, that's right. the things he said were so forceful. So oh, good. they would be perceived as hateful and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, mm -hmm. no, absolutely. I remember that. I remember... Um, uh, just uh the thing about parasitism and you know that yeah that that where he said uh you know i want out i don't know if you remember that i want out and yeah i remember that yeah absolutely back in the day that was tremendously impactful <clears throat> and powerful because yeah you felt like you're being spoken to and he just had the balls to <clears throat> go out in there and say it but i mean barbarossa i think in large measure has moved on and and, and you know, good for Same him in, in a similar way that you have. Um, uh, I'm not 100% sure of the details. I've not been in contact, but, um, you know, he's, I think he feels that he said his piece and, mm. and, and that's it. Um, so I, I don't, I think there's nothing wrong fundamentally if, if, if a person is, feels that they've made their contribution to just move on and, in, I mean, you'll always have the legendary status. You say it's niche, yes, perhaps, but the things that you said and the emotions that you inspired, um, that will uh, always have its place and always be unique. I, I think the only real shame, unfortunately, is that it's probably archived someplace, but maybe some of it would be helpful to some guys these days, but it's all sort of gone, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's just I felt, yeah, you know, was I contributing or was I was I hurting? I, and if I couldn't be sure, yeah. should that channel stay up? I just I wasn't certain. Yeah, I totally I totally get that, and I think people would would understand that. But I mean that as far I mean ultimately, if it, the original message of say of Minktaus was just doing doing your thing on your own terms. Hmm. The, seems to me that you're sort of sort of the embodiment of that um yeah. you've you've you have your legacy so to speak you've made your statements you left your message and and you know you're living i guess you could say in sort of the good life as as far as you can um judge it to be mm -hmm. i would i'd like to think it's a similar case of uh barbarossa and yeah. there's not there's not only nothing wrong with that. It's probably ultimately uh, uh, better than uh, than the alternative, because yeah, yeah. I mean, I, could you really, you know? To to be fair, I've always wanted to help men, but there. I'm also kind of my channel isn't just about is not just about that. There are topics I like to explore about the world, and it's um, sure. in part analytical and that's part of the reason why I keep on going there there are new things to be sort of 
uh, introspected on and, and what have you. But alternatively, you know, I, I just think there probably isn't anything better than having a quote unquote real life and being out there. Um, because <laughs> as someone who spends a lot of time on the internet, I could say that most people I encounter do not have uh, fulfilled lives. And if they did, they wouldn't be online nearly as much as they, they are. Um, so, you know, you're doing it right, as is likely Barbarossa, wherever he is and however well he might be doing. I'd like to think he's in a, a good spot, too, and, and decided that he said his piece. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's, I think it's always been said, you may have coined it, I don't know, but it's like uh, this space online was was never meant to be a destination. It's just yeah. part of the journey, and that, that's fine. And I, I don't think um, Neo actually ever escaped the matrix i don't think he ever left the matrix i think he adapted it uh, he worked within the matrix to make it work for him yeah. that's always been my approach uh, it's so my intention was never to, to opt out at all my my intention was to to connect to to work on myself and that was always my goal yeah and you sound you know you sound like you're you're just genuinely doing well um in a way that Frankly, most denizens I of the internet I encounter are not. Um, I, you know, I've seen all kinds of you know iterations of this, but people going online to find something that clearly is sort of missing in their own lives. I've observed online religious communities. You know, even though I'm not a believer myself, uh, do this where most of the time they spend, or a great deal, many of the time is online because they. They can't say find the religious community they'd like to have in real life. Um, I see it with you know FAs. I see it with all kinds of things. So mm. broadly, people just feel that they're lacking something in real life that is driving them to spend inordinate amounts of time online, which is in turn kind of warping to varying degrees their mind and. I have to say that, for, for, for better or worse, you have a unique talent. Um, I mean, you were always kind of living in the pulse of life type of guy. And I, I'm not ashamed to admit that far more than I am. Um, and I'm not sure how, you know, I, I don't know if you can transmit that. That might be a unique quality that Spetsnaz has, you know, uh, that I just not sure what to what to uh because yeah that that is something that that yeah. you know, people have unique qualities and and then there is a thing we talked about with the experience i don't know how to um you know you go through certain experience and you make experiences you make your peace with that i mean yeah i'm not it reminds me of that the the fight club scene you know well fight club's actually you know, sort of being founded and and it's Brad Pitt's uh, Tyler Durden's giving this speech about you know we've been not lied to and, and all this stuff and um, at some point in time you, you don't really want to at least the energy you want to your out energy output is no longer really directed to, to fighting and you just kind of want to move on with things and um, yeah. I certainly don't I, I guess I had a phase of red pill rage at some point in time you know, connecting the dots um, but in time, I mean, I, I can't remember that sort of thing. Just getting upset about women. I mean, mm. is not something that I, I, I ever really feel. Um, and when I when I hear about some experience or encounter something, it's just I just nod my head. And, yeah, you know, that's just women. You know. Mm. Yeah. Um, I've always, um, I've always maintained that every man has value, no matter what he's done, where he's come from. Every every man has value, and he should never compromise that. And if someone or, or something in your life is not adding, adding value in a in a in a meaningful way to your life, they shouldn't be in your life. Mm -hmm. it, it should not be a part of your life. Absolutely not. Um, and one thing I'd say to men is, it, it, what works for me has always been. You know, moving through different social networks, like I, you know, um, it, for me, it's a very practical, step-by-step -step approach, and it's it's the way that I, I like to do it. 
it's approaching people and asking for their input you know like for the you know the gym we both do the gym um you know when i went in there i went in with the intent of, of finding out how to do things so i needed a mentor so it's like show me how to do this because you know coming from the coming from pretty rough background and all the rest of it um and getting into boxing that showed me that that men were willing to work with me show me how things were done and i like that kind of mentorship and it was very important to me so i've had that all, all through you know the different networks that i have um and it's just step by step and it's you know and you, you're not you're not um taking up the time it's not an inconvenience for them to put them in that position they like being in that position they want to help you you're adding value to them they're adding value to your life um so you know, people say that things will get better. Well, they won't. Not unless you actively work at making it better. You know, that's what I want to say to these young guys, um, and I do all the time. It's you've got to take these little incremental steps, and it's yeah, it's tough, but it's it, it gets you to a better place. It gets you to a more positive mindset, and it makes changes. All those little incremental changes. Is that going to get you laid? I don't know. I mean, the world's the world's gone mad. The world's insane. I'm I'm not gonna sit here and try to debunk the black pill or Tinder statistics. Or I can't. And it's <laughs> it is what it is. You know. I'm, I'm sorry. What can I say? And I'm not trying to make light of it. It's it is what it is. And that's that's horrible for a young man to go through that. That you know, eats. They're having fun. I'm not. You know, they're having sex. I'm not. And it's then they get stuck into this, this spiral and I understand that and they should be able to state that out loud, but it's not their fault. You know, I don't want to sound like Robin Williams and Good Will Hunting, but it's, yeah, you know, again, accept what you can change, accept what you can't, but it shouldn't impede your life or, or you, you know, finding value in things, finding value in yourself. You enjoy being a part of. And yeah, maybe a sausage fest if you go and join a boxing gym or or what have you, or what are you going to do? Yeah, okay, but you're still you're building up those little those little networks, and it's going to build onto other things, and opportunities are going to arise because you're 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 holding those doors open, you're opening those doors, you're the only person that can. So yeah. it's yeah, yeah. I That's think what it's I good that you uh, you missed out on on the black pill. You don't, you know, these yeah. these, these days, I, I am no, known as the Lord of Black Pills. Just saying, <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm not, I don't intentionally try to be, but um, no, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, that that's that that's the thing. Um, it, things can lead to other things, and you know, maybe through networking and, and doing various things, they maybe they will um, uh, get some dates or uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but being able to do something as opposed to nothing at the, at the stage a lot of these guys are at, that's kind of what they need to do. They, some of these guys literally just need to, they're, the best exercise they can get is going for a walk for uh, you know 45 minutes, like leaving the house. Mm. Um, yeah. And it's like you know, and I'm not going to downplay it and say you know it's it's just these guys because a lot of these guys are very you know they've got a lot going on. They you know they they're they're educated and they've got hobbies and they do things and they do everything they can to, but they still missing out on this component of their life. So it's not just you know I'm, I'm not going to say these guys go and get you know go and get a haircut and spin plates. I mean that's oh, come on. Um, a lot of these guys have really got their their stuff together, but they're missing this one component, and it's that is out of their control. But mm. speaking from experience, do they really want to dumpster dive into all that toxicity? Because it's it's brutal and it's painful, and it's you're just going to devalue yourself in the process. You mean the women's? It's, yes. It's, yeah, yeah. It's it's. I mean, I haven't been in a relationship, God, in years. Um, but you know, I, I try to keep active and all the rest of it. And I know. Well, here's you know, spin. occasionally I'll. Here's the spin you. I mean, just because of how crazy the internet is. I mean, I don't think it'll reach it, but but and in some ways it is that way. Imagine if the new gold standard were if you weren't a multimillionaire, you're, you're, no, like, your life way. is just yeah. every, it's, just, it's over. Like, I only make a couple of hundred k. Yeah, it's over. You know, <laughs> but, but uh, you laugh. But but we're kind of moving in this direction where yeah. the, the it's yeah, so insane that well, I, 
I guess I can only have a small house and a kind of decent motorcycle and car and a dog and eh, you know I only get laid three times a week and it's over you know but but this is a, it's just that the superlative is becoming just this since I, I've thought about this I have this thought occasionally yeah. play around like, like we I don't think it would ever go there necessarily the, that extreme but it kind of is moving in that direction and that might not be the final destination ever but it's just everything just being the superlative that you you have to live for and if you don't have it then mm. then just uh you know give up you know and and don't don't do anything you know i'm you know i'm not in a particularly great spot in my life now where, where i'm particularly the uh, the flat i'm living in and, and some other things but to me, that just incentivizes me more to like get out, get out of the house. You know, I wanna I wanna exercise more. I wanna do various yeah. things. Um, I try to do things to get my my mind off um, <clears throat> current obstacles and things like that, um, because that's just to be honest, that's just gonna make my life easier. The more I focus on the uh, the difficulties I'm having these days with my living situation or or, or my health situation. The, the more I get dragged down. So I just try to do all the things that, that kind of push me away from that that I can. And that has just a, a cascade effect of just being in a, a state of more of equilibrium rather than in uh, a state of disequilibrium. But yeah, I mean, you, you can you can push this game as far as you want to the point where, oh, if I'm not... I mean, and there are people like that, I haven't counted them. I know a guy... <laughs> online i don't see him very often and he's quite serious he said that if by 30 he's not a multi-millionaire he's gonna off himself and he, he, he's and he's still work every day he's doing this sort of online hustle and trading and whatever i don't see him that often but and but he's, he's quite serious he's, I, I last time i checked in on him i think he was 26 or 27 well i got a couple more years i might make it <laughs> like, <Yeah. he's> ridiculous. <laughs> gotta hit that number yeah it's all yeah. about that number yeah um, it's, it's, it, these people do exist and it's, it's extreme, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of where we're at. I, I, instead of trying to enjoy the, the things that are available, I have a lot of, I, I don't know, I have a couple of close friends, you know, I have a close friend and he's in a, a very rough living situation in a very unpleasant country. Um, and, you know, he often falls into the trap of just obsessing about his circumstances rather than yeah. just looking at some of the things that are kind of on the up end. And I get it, you know, because you do. That's the thing. At the end of the day, you got to do what you can um, not. Yeah. Sometimes you can't do what you'd like to. So basically, you got to mm -hmm. do what you can. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. So I don't know. Uh, I, I think. You, I mean, would you like to add anything, or? Uh... Um, I, I think I've, I've I've said my piece for now. But you know, talking to you and and having a look at the content online, it's sort of, yeah, it's 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 piqued my interest again. You know, I'm I'm sort of keen to see how things develop and see yeah, what direction well, things are heading. In. You're always uh, you're all I'll, I will I'm happy to be a, a platform for the uh, the epic voice mm. of Spetsnaz if you ever <laughs> want to uh, have something. Uh, or I ever have something else to say, or you think you could sure. contribute something. Um, but I think uh, living real life is uh, is a good thing, and it's something we should uh, ideally all uh, aspire to. Um, so in that sense, you're a bit of a role model. Oh, well, I'm flattered. Yeah, at least you didn't take a dig and make me cringe. Like no, 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 did, did I? I uh, <laughs> anyways, I, I hope at least the audience, I know a lot, I do have a lot of old school people there. You were asking about Spetsnaz. This is a, a quirk of fate. I, I did not, you know, this is providence. The gods intervened, and I was fortunate enough to be the recipient of the gods' mercy here. Um, so, yeah, I hope you're the you... original. You're the original OG. Eh, not really. I'm just a fossil. But I'm glad uh, Spetsnaz was here to offer his point of view and, and a. I hope uh, you get some value out of what he said now as you used to get value out of uh, what he said back in the day. And perhaps this is not the last time we, we hear from him. Um, perhaps not. Uh, we'll see. But uh, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope this was uh, a pleasant surprise. And uh, thank you, Spetsnaz, for, for joining me. Thank you for having me.
If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.